dominates on the glass. Mike Brown dominates in the scoring column with 16. Nobody for the Terriers had more than six, and that was Jalen Allen off the bench with a couple of quick threes at one point. With Dean Keener and Darren Goldwater, we start the second half of our 4-5 matchup, second quarter final of the day. The winner gets top seed Chattanooga in tomorrow's first semifinal. Browning down to the floor to try and win that loose ball. He's tied up by McGee and Newman, and it's going back the other way. Jump ball, possession there on Whopper. Clearly, Catamounts have tried to go into Torian Brummett at every opportunity today. They want to play inside out. Here's McGee. They ran him off a couple of screens. Then he leaves one back for Gordon. The extra pass finds Garcia alone at the top. Garcia, We've talked about three. who can get hot. There's a guy that can really change the course of this game as well, Eric Garcia. You don't want to unleash him. They have three of the best individual three-point shooters in the league, Garcia, Collins, and Fletcher McGee. All well over 40% from behind the arc, and Garcia and Collins down slightly the last couple of weeks. Amazing. Newman went for the steal, and Brummett actually got his hands on one before it went out of bounds. So Newman creates the turnover, and Western has turned it over on its first two possessions here to start the half. Foul on Devin Peterson. Garcia like a savvy veteran, right? Just walks it up and then turns the Jets on. No doubt. I think Peterson was caught thinking Garcia was going to pick it up and just kind of initiate the play or the offense. Instead, he just kept his head down, kept driving, caused the foul. Here's Spencer Collins. Took him a while to get going in the first half. The first shot of the second won't fall for him. And Collins draws the assignment of Mike Brown here. As much as you'd like to see Spencer Collins get going scoring-wise, I think his biggest assignment in the second half is controlling Mike Brown on this end of the floor. 100%. I, I concur. And he's going to have to absolutely tag Brown at all opportunity and get some help along the way when there's transition situations. They know each other very well. Both seniors been around this league four years. They have played each other numerous times, double figure times for that matter. Another quick foul, this one on Garcia. And not only have they played each other a lot, in big games they find themselves playing each other. They're typically around the top of the league, both teams regularly have been playing each other in this tournament if you missed it in the first half pointed out this is the sixth time in seven years that they are playing in the tournament Newman on the baseline, and Wofford has drawn even with Western Carolina. He saw Brummett come out, close out with his hands down. He said, why not? I can make that 16-footer on the baseline. Here's Brown, able to hang in the air and bank in the shot. That'll calm Western down here a little bit to begin the second half. Well, the degree of difficulty of some of his shots are very, very high. He's got a way of putting the ball in the basket. Justin Gordon isolated briefly on Gosselin. The double team surprised him, and he walks with it. All right, it did surprise him. Game, they played one-on-one. -on -one. I don't think they've wanted to leave Fletcher McGee, but you see right here. Over and presented himself, and that 6'9 body forced Force Gordon to lose his balance. 
Eric Garcia hasn't allowed Rhett Harrelson any room to operate outside. Yeah. Up through. Nice strength deployed right there. You're right, he brought it down, made himself four foot tall, but then able to extend through traffic there and get it off. on this last play after it goes inside he kind of drops it you thought that there was going to be a tie up Collins couldn't get his hand on it in time and Brummett then got it off and in strongest man wins That's exactly right three seconds on the shot clock now Garcia lost it going up Western fans applaud their catamounts and what they've done defensively. It's just been one-on-one. -on -one. Garcia had to force that up again with the shot clock running down. Western Carolina beat Wofford the last time they met. It was late in the regular season. Part of this run, seven of the last eight games have been won by the catamounts to rise up from the bottom of the Southern Conference standings into this number five spot and grab one of the six first round buys. And they did it by holding them to 48 points. They did, and that win came at the Ramsey Center where the Catamounts were 12 and two this year. Drummond knocks it back to Goslin. Harrelson finally has some room. Mike Brown with an offensive rebound in traffic, and it's out of bounds off the Terriers. Western Carolina maintains the lead. A lot of excitement around the U.S. Cellular Center these last couple of days. The women's tournament is already all set. The championship game will be tomorrow. It is Chattanooga and Mercer. The men's tournament kicked off yesterday. This is the fourth game. There were two yesterday, one earlier today. The three previous games have all gone down to the wire. One of them went to overtime. One was a final possession game. And then the one earlier today sure looked like it was going to be a final possession game. Chattanooga trailed by nine to the eighth seed, the Sanford Bulldogs. They trailed most of the day and then finally got over that hump and held on for the win. That's what makes tournament time special, right? A new, on a neutral court, new life for everybody. Pressure abounds, particularly at the top. Brummett isolated on C.J. Newman here. Spencer Collins bluffed coming down on the double team. 
And Torian Brummett is now having a pretty good second half. He's key to six nothing Western run. You know, he was calling for the ball as we went to that timeout. He was talking to Coach Hunter. He said, I want it. Clearly, they talked about it. Justin Browning leads the league in steals. He gets an easy two. That's what Justin Browning does best. You mentioned it. He leads the league in steals. He is a great utility guy for the Catamounts. Watch it again. He just runs through the lane, the passing lane, and he knows how to finish it with authority. Catamounts back up eight. Psych person in the building. <laughs> that is in his DNA. You know, he just, he's what you draw as an assistant coach, right? His, uh, his daughter's 16. The one that's one is at 16. There was a bit, there was a quick hesitation yeah. on something, but, but yeah, otherwise, she, she had a really good voice. It was very, very good. Yeah, very, very good. good. Yep. I think he said it was the first time she's done something like that. 16, wow. Yeah. That's pretty cool. First steal of the day for Justin Browning. Ninth nationally in thefts. He gets the easiest two of the day. And he's generally tasked with guarding the other team's best perimeter player. That time he was guarding Spencer Collins, ran through the passing lane. He's just a guy that you know, every team needs. He's, he's unselfish. He can score the basketball, but more so he's about just winning and what it takes to win. He'll take a charge. As you mentioned, he leads the league in steals. Just the, Justin Browning's the epitome of a team player. He just always finds a way to affect the game. Whether or not he's got the ball, whether or not it's scoring, now it's Brown who knocks it free. Mike Young takes a timeout, and his team turns it over off of that. Their fourth turnover in three minutes. Yeah, that's not like a Wofford Terrier coach team. They generally are very good out of timeouts in special situations. They almost got it back, but the help came from Red Harrelson's man, and normally that is going to result in three. Instead, it results in a foul for the Catamounts. Boy, and those Catamount fans were ready to explode, as was the bench. You mentioned it, Harrelson, one of the better marksmen in this league, particularly late in the season, just couldn't get it to go down. Wofford caught a little bit of a break there. He certainly did. That could have changed the course of some things. Now it's Fletcher McGee. And he can do that. He doesn't have to set his feet or square his body. Brummett wants it again, right into the chest of C.J. Newman. It's Spencer Collins who scoops it up at the ankles. We talk, you, you know, you said McGee can shoot some off-balance shots, absolutely capable, but give Western Carolina a lot of credit for forcing him into tough shots. That was an in-rhythm, on-balance shot for Eric Garcia. Many respects Garcia and Harrelson, just almost like brothers in terms of what they can do and how they can man the point, but they can knock down threes. Just because Harrelson has missed his last two, you cannot lose sight of him. Spencer Collins hangs with Mike Brown, who got it over the rim. Second time today, Brown has been low to the ground and just pushed it up and over. 
Just great strength, will. Brown trying to poke it free from McGee. Now it's Collins for three. Seven point lead for Western Carolina. Inside 13 minutes to play. Mike Brown penetrates. No one's got Goslin. All the momentum right now on the Catamount side. Terrier's got to figure out something, particularly at the defensive end. After a cold start, both teams cold in the first half. Western got hot. There's McGee, who's going to the line. Western got hot about midway through that second half. They've carried it into this half. Some of them are tough shots, but they're also getting easy looks at the rim, like that last one from Goslin. Give McGee a lot of credit on that last shot. He could have forced another off-balance three. Instead, he saw that the defense was closing out, chose to drive the baseline. Didn't finish, but got fouled. That's, that's a high IQ basketball play, particularly for a freshman. Nation's leader in free throw percentage here, Fletcher McGee. McGee will finish as one of the best freshman free throw shooters in NCAA history this year. Only the sixth freshman ever over 90%. You're, you're in rare air when you're talking about numbers like that. It's almost surprising when you hear him hit the rim. As is the Mike Young style, jacket on for the first half, jacket off for the second half. I guess that's kind of what he wants out of his team. Intensity pick up as the game goes along. Yeah, coaches are awfully superstitious too, and when you got a good thing going, stay with it. Double team came, Brown lost it, and then commits the foul. Derek Brooks comes in and provides a little bit of a defensive spark. He's just trailing Mike Brown, and, and clearly there was a tie-up right there and the foul on Brown. Nice job by Brooks. Terriers have lost their last couple of games coming into this tournament. Hasn't happened in a while where they've come in cold. Fletcher McGee was fouled. Habubakar Matumbo got him. A four-point opportunity now for the freshman. It's amazing what a defensive stop can do for you. It started with Derek Brooks getting it, and then the Terriers free. One of the best three-point shooters in the country. He'll get a chance to make it four when we come back. One of the keys to the game for Western Carolina today was not allow Fletcher McGee to get comfortable. They did a good job in the first half. He has five quick points here in succession and has a chance for a four-point play to get Wofford back within three. We revisit Dean's general shale building blocks. APB on Brown, that's fine. Wofford struggled with that. 
and Western Carolina has defended the three well until this recent outburst. No doubt about it. And, you know, four of seven by Wofford, excuse me, three of five from behind the arc. Mike Young likes that. Starts with Fletcher McGee. It doesn't always end with him. Hey, look, Garcia, Collins, Jalen Allen, all capable, but you say it over and over and over, but Fletcher McGee is, is simply one of the best shooters in college basketball. His confidence, every time he touches it, he thinks he's going to make it. Wofford's hit three out of their five threes in this half. They're over 50% for the game. Remember those quick two by Jalen Allen back in the first half. He's on the floor now. Eric Garcia getting a bit of an extended rest. He'll check in at the next whistle for the Terriers. Double team came out. Brummett is fouled by Allen. Didn't give him the easy two. Oh, when the double team came, Peterson was able to make that pass to Brummett. That's the risk you take when you're doubling a ball screen. You pull potentially one of your bigs away from the basket, and if the, if the offensive player can find the open post, you got a chance for points. Ten now for Torian Brummett, who averaged a double-double two weeks ago. He's a rebound shy of one to begin the tournament here today. He's one of four senior starters for Western Carolina, if you count Rhett Harrelson. Dean, you pointed it out, he's basically a sixth starter for him. Had started all year until an injury. Now he's their sixth man. Wow, McGee hits the deck opposite the ball. No call there. Derek Brooks will drive in. We got a foul on the floor. I think they got Peterson. Minute. Here's a guy that's averaging you know, over 13 points and seven and a half rebounds a game. He only played in 16 games as a freshman. You know, I, I give him a lot of credit for just kind of sticking with it. So many kids today are just quick to transfer. Blame the coach. Blame something other than looking at themselves and saying, I simply got to get better. I got to get in shape, whatever it is. And as a sophomore, he played more. Last year, he started all 32, and he is a key point. Spencer right Collins. Now. They've been going to him a lot. They like the matchup in there with C.J. Newman. He just couldn't handle that pass. He's mad at himself. He gained position. He ran right to the rim. Didn't worry about a three-second call. He pass was thrown where he could have caught it. He was starting that move to the end. Right. Young players, anytime you see a post player's numbers, that means he's open. Fletcher McGee is always open. Now for the freshman of the year. But down nine, you can get back in a hurry when you're making shots like he's made here the last minute and a half. There are two guys right with him. It just doesn't matter. Coached in the ACC against J.J. Redick when he was at Duke. There's a lot of Redick in that kid at McGee. Nice pass from Torian Brummett up high, down low to Mark Gosselin. If you're comparing anybody to J.J. Redick, and that's the second or third time you've done it here with Fletcher McGee. These are high guys to praise with. Eric Garcia trying to create a little bit for himself. That's not happening. McGee will fade away from the opposite side. Newman bounces it down, and it's a foul. Against Western Carolina, they got Torian Brummett. You know what else? When, when, when you watch, if you've watched Wofford over the years, look, you go back when Carl Cochran, who was a player of the year last year, when he was a freshman and sophomore, he took some what, what you might consider ill-advised shots. And, it, and it's, it's interesting. Mike Young kind of lived with that. And, and, and there's not a better coach in this league than Mike Young. But he, I think he knew... Hey, I, I can bring this guy, he's got talent, I can bring him along. It's the same with Fletcher McGee. He, Mike Young will live with some high degree of difficulty shots by McGee. The difference is McGee is hitting far more from a percentage standpoint than Cochran was hitting. Cochran was in the 30 percent, so you're right, as a freshman and sophomore, but before he really developed into kind of the, the true player that he became as a junior and senior.
sometimes you have to coach the good ones a little bit differently. It's not about playing favorites, but hey, the reality is you just don't coach every kid the same. Western's led by as much as nine. Wofford's largest lead was three. Mike Brown had Spencer Collins leaning. McGee came with the help on the perimeter at Spencer Collins. What do you know? Inside 10 minutes to go here in a Southern Conference tournament game. And it's a two possession game again. Uh, well, that's what you have when it's a four or five matchup, particularly when these two teams who know each other so well. Fourth game of the tournament, fourth time it's happened. What a find, what a fitting. Brent Hampton got the foul, but he didn't get the number. He kind of got blocked out. What a terrific pass by Eric Garcia and Justin Gordon, one of the better athletes and dunkers in this league, finishes with authority. What's better, the pass or the dunk? I don't know. <laughs> they were about to check on who committed the foul, and they figured it out. They decide Rhett Harrelson's the one who commits the foul, so they hurry both teams back to the lane for Gordon to attempt to finish off this three-point play. <laughs> He's got Wofford within one, and now we got a foul. Spencer Collins goes crashing into a cameraman underneath. Abubakar well, Matumbo pushed him after that free throw. And yet I think they made the call on Spencer Collins. Mike Young clearly wants an explanation. So does Spencer Collins. Let's see if we can get a look at what happened. It's on the right side of the lane. There was clearly contact. Or was there? Yeah, I'm not so sure. I, I didn't see an extension of an arm bar by Browning. So there's your call. That's why Mike Young is red-faced here. They, they did. They got Collins just for trying to wrap up a little bit before he stumbled his way. You don't see Mike Young get after the officials quite like that. I think he had reason there. That's three on his senior leader. I haven't seen Ryan Saulville for the Terriers here, although Newman and Gordon both playing well. A deep one here for Mike Brown. Off the top of the glass, and it nearly went down. And just in defense, so good by both teams. Eric Garcia with a nice look. Mike Brown tried to grab it with one arm. From the floor, he's got it off to Matumbo. Harrelson with a no look to Matumbo, who's blocked from behind by Gordon. And we're going to stay on this end of the floor with the Catamounts. You don't think both teams want this game. They know what's at stake. They don't care that Chattanooga is the next one in line. Nice defensive transition by Fletcher McGee in the block. Brummett now working against the freshman Pegro. Brummett picks up his dribble pretty early and still draws the foul. For the confidence by Brummett. He just, every time he catches it, he's thinking shot first as well he should, particularly against the, the freshman Pegro. And he showed really nice footwork today. And he's been able to, to keep the pivot foot and then step through or step behind on occasion. Larry Hunter's Catamounts grabbed a nine-point lead. A couple minutes back here. Since then, Wofford has heated up. Fletcher McGee, then some on the inside. It's a 12-5 run for the Terriers since they had their largest lead of the day, the Catamounts did.
Justin Browning able to stay in front of Spencer Con